You found the WMIX Saturday Sports Show on AM 940 and WMIXSports.com. Cared for by Crossroads Community Hospital. The Saturday Sports Show has been recognized by the Illinois Broadcasters Association as one of the top radio programs in the state. That means the very best mix of local sports content is right here. From the powerhouse on Broadway, the Saturday Sports Show starts now. Starts now indeed. We're a week closer to high school football. Good morning, Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Glad to have you with us. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwitzki in studio for you till 10 o'clock. Talking South 7 Conference football as well as catching up with some of the coaches we were unable to catch up with over the past couple of weeks. But we'll preview the South 7 Conference today. We'll talk with Jared Shainer, head coach of the Mount Vernon Rams. Of course, they had their scrimmage last night. Then we'll talk to Central Valley Orphans head coach Ray Colling. They did not scrimmage last night. Probably put it towards an extra practice. Um, Johnny Hollis of the Cesarville Waltonville Woodlawn Red Devils will stop by. We'll talk with Kerry Martin about the Marion Wildcats, Mark Beitler about the McLeansboro Foxes, Todd Thomas about the Pinckneyville Panthers, and then we'll catch up with Mike McManus, of course, uh, one of the voices of the Orphans on X95 and the Big 1210 in Centralia, as well as a sports editor for the Morning Sentinel. We'll talk with Leo uh, about some of the other uh, teams in the region, such as Salem, Clinton County area, amongst others, and then Norm Sanders, of course, of the Belleville News Democrat. Be glad to have him. Um, Noted for hockey, especially his coverage there as a Blues beat writer, but also a famed high school sports writer there as well. We'll talk with him about some of the Metro East goings on in the world of high school football and get you set for Friday night's action. Kickoff is here, and of course, the Saturday Sports Show here to tell you about it. Presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Hard to believe high school football here on Friday night. 7 o'clock start times for many, 7.30 for a select few. We'll be on the air at 6.30 with your Mount Vernon Rams football pregame here on AM 940 and online with video. At WMIXSports.com, the Rams travel to Rochester to take on the three-time defending state champion Rochester Rockets. Should be a dandy, but before we get to our previews, a quick reminder of a fundraiser today for St. Mary's School. It's called Driven to Give. Of course, it's put on by Lincoln and Ford Square, and you can go to St. Mary's School or you can go to Ford Square. They're on Broadway, the back entrance. They're having the drive at both locations. That will enable the school to possibly earn an extra two grand. So that's right. Instead of the usual six grand that you would normally get from this fundraiser, in which you would take a test drive with a volunteer or teacher, $20 per vehicle test driven would go back to the school, up to 300 vehicles, and of course that'd be $6,000. But this year, this time, this fundraiser, if 100 people take the second drive in a Lincoln MKX, the school can earn up to an additional $2,000. Pretty neat little deal, eight grand for St. Mary's. That's at Ford Square. It gets underway at 9. It goes until 3 o'clock. You'll want to check that out and help out the St. Mary's Knights. But there you go. There's a fundraiser today at Ford Square and St. Mary's. Anyhow, high school football, we're telling you about the preview today, South 7 Conference, amongst some other things. And it's hard to believe we are finally to that point. We're no longer, we say, in two weeks, three weeks. Finally, Friday night, this Friday night now, six days from now, high school football is underway, and it's been a long time coming. And that roll over the calendar seems like you're waiting forever with it being on the 30th this well, year. Well, you know, obviously golf's underway, hot and heavy this week. Volleyball, cross country, tennis will kick off this week. Soccer is going to go again this week for high school sports fall. Of course, junior high baseball, softball's been going around. Cross country getting ready to roll. And, you know, of course, all the games next week, of course, the three conferences uh, we do cover a lot, and then we're going to start spreading out, covering uh, our neck of the woods to the north, northeast and northwest. I mean, it's the time is here. And a 5.30 kickoff next week, a 7 o'clock kickoffs, and then 7.30 kickoffs next Friday night. And... One o'clock next Saturday, and the way the weather looks for next weekend, summer's going to have one last blast of the furnace. It looks like, and it's going to be about mid nineties when kickoffs happen next week. It's because the Ducoin Fair is here. Seems to be synonymous with hot weather typically. So, although it is summer weather, in all fairness, I haven't had much of a summer. So it'll be summer weather, of course, for kickoff this coming week. And you take a look at some of the matchups. Of course, we're talking about the South Pacific Conference today. Uh, Nick Hill of Carbonell, unfortunately, unable to join us. Picture day. Down there at Carbondale, which is basically synonymous with organized chaos. I well, had to see Mount Vernon Rams picture day on yeah. Thursday, and it's like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's it's organized chaos is what it is. And this time, <laughs> you're like Murfreesboro High School this morning reading on Twitter. They're getting pictures of every fall sport possible at once. You know, and, again, you're talking about uh, coaches and teams who had soap games last night or will have tonight. Carbondale had theirs last night. 
and they're going to get together and they're going to do some film then they're going to do some pictures which will take forever and you're going through individuals and team shots and coaches and head shots and then you go through and then you have practice I mean we understand that you know we're not there you know to I guess be in the way of the coaches we understand hey if you want to come on the show if you, we'd love to have you on but again we understand if you're busy doing your job we do not want to interfere with that exactly and we'll tell you give you our thoughts on Carmdale based on what we know from last year and having seen them for eons uh, coming into the 2013 season. New head coach there is Nick Hill, the SIU quarterback who made the all-century team this week. But speaking of coaches, South Seven Conference today, we'll talk with Jared Chainer, but we need to take a quick break. It'll be Mount Vernon Rams football after here on the Saturday Sports Show, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. A digestive problem can affect every area of your life. But now there's a specialist right here in town who focuses on digestive health. Mayo Clinic trained Dr. Ted Paul Atwal has opened the only gastroenterology clinic in Mount Vernon. Dr. Atwal treats acid reflux, gallbladder problems, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcers, and more. For your appointment with Dr. Atwal at Crossroads Specialty Clinic, call 618-241-9071. America is a nation on wheels. Everyone has at least one automobile. We use them for shopping, work, everything we do. But they can be a threat. Some accidents can't be prevented. Your professional Pekin Insurance Agency, Page Insurance on Crownview and Mount Vernon, can help protect you from a large financial loss when an accident happens. Call Page Insurance today at 242-7000 about low-cost auto insurance from Pekin Insurance. Ask them about the many money-saving discounts that are available. Depend on your hometown professionals. Pekin Insurance. Here's Jeff Schmidt for Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon. The 2014 Chevy Impala is a car like no other. It's a world-class car. And I tell you, Chevrolet really knocked it out of the ballpark with this car. The more we show it, the more we love it. Our customers love it. The design is beautiful. The interior is absolutely gorgeous. The ride and handling is like no other. And for the money, I don't think you can find a better buy out there right now. Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon, 3423 Broadway in Mount Vernon. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. It's powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski in studio for you. Glad to have you with us. South 7 Conference football preview today. And, of course, first out of the gate, we're proud to welcome the head coach of the Mount Vernon Rams, Jared Shaner. Coach, good morning. Good morning, guys. How are you? You're up pretty good. It's finally here. We can finally say that Friday night, of course, the official kickoff. Rams had meet the team last night. It's finally here. That's about all I can say. It's, that's exactly right. That's kind of my sentiments exactly. Um, you know, all the all the hard work and effort that go back from you know, the end of last season throughout the winter and spring into getting everybody here in the summer and then from, from doubles and, and kind of beating up on yourself. And we told the kids as we walked out the field last night, uh, this morning is officially game week. When you start talking about game week as a coach, I, do you worry more about yourself for week one, having not seen an opponent on tape, or do you kind of go through and, and start worrying a little bit about Rochester as the week goes on? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, obviously, you know, you've got to control what you can take care of and control, and, and um, so, you know, we'll watch film this morning and look at our, our scrimmage last night, and you know, obviously that has nothing to do with Rochester or what they do offensively or defensively, but... But just trying to trying to be good at the little things um, and, and be disciplined and, and take care of your own end. Um, but it, it wouldn't be very good coaching, in my opinion, if you ignored who you have to play. So, so we'll begin to talk about them a little bit today um, and uh, just kind of in general what they do offensively and defensively. And then, you know, throughout next week, that's when the preparation for them really starts and, um, and we just go from there. Looking at the returning players for your team, returning starters for both sides of the football and or key kids you want to name as far as players coming back for the 2013 season? Well, we've got, we've got a bunch of them, uh, which is a good thing. Um, you know, if we kind of start, we'll start on the defensive side. And, um, you know, in the secondary, we have a couple guys coming back, to Toby Marshall and Doug Gardner. Uh, we have some linebackers who, who started or played significant time last year, uh, Graham Hankin and then, Andrew Heiner, 
started getting some varsity time at the end of last year. Jacob Williamson has, has started and come in for two years now since he was a sophomore. Uh, defensive line-wise, we'll see a few new names. We, we uh, had some older kids there last year that graduated, but um, I feel like our, our kids that are in there now are going to step up and, and do a nice job for us. And then on the offensive side of the ball, we really, um, depending on what game it was, we we only lost two starters on the offensive side of the ball. Um, Clayton Reeves, our quarterback, to graduation, obviously, and then uh, Pat Bradford was a receiver along with Zane Young. Uh, and they kind of split some time out there, and, and uh, we started some different guys. So a lot of guys coming back on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, all of our offensive line is back. Um, you know, All of our running backs are back. And, again, uh, Jacoby Marshall played some receiver for us last year. So feel feel pretty good about the returners that we have. And, and then a lot of young kids just stepping up and, and uh, you know, filling into the holes and competing and, and pushing some of those guys that have started for a year or two now. Looking at the South 7 Conference, the last couple of years it's been Centralia's playground and everybody's had to abide by their rules. They lost a considerable amount to graduation. However, when you look at the schedules this year, Koki and Altov have the favorable home starting schedule, three other first four games at home, while the other four spend a lot of time on the road early on in the schedule. For your team that's pretty young, I know you got a lot of returners, playing on the road as much as you guys will do early on, three of your first four, how do you get your kids ready to get mentally tough, to have to prepare to get on the bus and go to places like Rochester, Mascuda, and Altov to start the season? Yeah, well, we've, we've been talking about that, and, uh, you know, there are some challenges. You've got a little different routine when you're on the road, obviously. And, uh, you know, one thing about going on the road is um, you, you get to play, I guess, kind of the underdog underdog card a little bit more, um, especially in week one going to a great program like Rochester. So uh, I don't think we'll have a problem getting our kids ready to play. Um, and, you know, you try to simulate some things in practice and, and put them through some adverse situations and, and deal with adversity and maybe make them, you know, do some extra conditioning for, for problems you're having to practice or whatever it is. But ultimately, um, you know, there's no, uh, I guess, there's no substitute for that game time speed and adversity and intensity. Um, so hopefully we can uh, learn quickly uh, in the first week or two and, and carry that over and, and really make that a positive for us throughout the season. Speaking of positives and and getting started and how important the first week or two are going to be, after last year and having another class coming up with a lot of success, how important is that first half to get a good start at Rochester? Well, I do. I think it's important, um, and more so just for a confidence standpoint, maybe from from uh, our older guys. Uh, as you said, we've had you know some success on the younger levels the last year or two uh, with our freshmen and our JV. Um, so I think they feel good about where we're at. Our our senior class has done a great job. Um, they're they're still a class that hasn't had a lot of success throughout their football careers, but I think every day they're gaining more confidence. Um, the, the 15 seniors that we have um, have been football players for quite a while. Um, I think they believe in what we're doing, and, and again, the younger guys are pushing them a little bit, and, and, and they're stepping up and being leaders. So I think that first, that first half and coming out and just, uh, competing well in that first half at Rochester is going to be key, and we'll start talking about that this morning with the guys. Well, and the Rams, who are certainly going to try to look good on the field, will literally look good on the field with some new uniforms this year, I noticed. I thought we looked pretty sharp, yeah. Um, our, our athletic department, it was time for some new uh, away uniforms, um, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, next year we'll, we'll match them up with some new home ones as well. But uh, kids looked good last night, and we, we talked about that too. Um, you guys look good. Um, you, you know, your athletic department, your school supports what you're doing. Um, our Gridiron Club obviously does a tremendous amount. Um, you know, I think uh, we need to come out and, and compete and, and give everything that we have each week and, and just show people that uh, we're appreciative of those things and, and hopefully we'll uh, play as good as we look. Uh, did the coaches get new pants to wear on the sidelines? Is that, the, is that a rumor that's true or not? <laughs> No pants, no pants. Uh, I pro- my wife actually would probably be making a shopping trip uh, uh, to get me some new new game day stuff, but it won't include pants. I'll tell you that. So now to just get this out of the way, since you're only doing one sport this year, does that mean you're not going to wear pants at all? Just shorts the entire year? Uh, I will wear pants uh, for our football banquet that's hopefully in, in mid to late November this year. 
and um, barring weddings and funerals, you will not see me in pants the rest of the year. Mount Vernon Conference riding around on the donut cart. I guarantee it'll be shorts and a coat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. That wouldn't be the WMIX Saturday Sports Show without the WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week. And, of course, this week we want to know, I'm going to check the actual verbiage here, what was your least favorite subject in school? Uh, my least favorite? That's a tough one. I, I enjoyed school. Um, I, I liked going there and, and the social aspect and, and the classroom, too, and I knew I wanted to be a teacher early on. But I think overall my least favorite subject would have to be English. Um, it just it didn't make sense to me all the time. Um, I liked science and I liked uh, history and social studies, and obviously you know the, the uh, quote unquote easy ones, the arts and the PEs. Those are fun, and coaches taught those. But uh, English, I just struggled with, and especially like ACT prep English when when you're reading this really long passage and then they just change like one comma or colon or semicolon. I'm completely clueless about that stuff. God bless the English language. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, obviously Friday night, 7 o'clock kickoff on the road at Rochester, three-time defending state champions. Certainly will be a great test for the Mount Vernon Rams to open their season. Can't wait to be there on Friday. We'll see you then, and I'm sure we'll talk to you a million times throughout the week. Thanks for having me, guys. Always a pleasure. That's Jared Shainer, ready to get the season started, as are we. And, of course, the 6.30 pregame here on AM 940 will re-air the Shainer interview, of course, in our pregame show, the Landers Collision Center pregame show, of course, on Mount Vernon Rams football to be powered by Community First Bank of the Heartland, the official voice of Rams Athletics on WMIX Sports. We can't wait to bring that to you again Friday night, 6.30, your pregame, 7 o'clock, your kickoff in Sangamon County. We'll be there. We hope you'll join us on the radio and online with video at WMIXSports.com or make the trek up to Rochester. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk Orphans football with Centralia coach Ray Colling. It's all after the break on the Saturday Sports Show, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. Your spine is a miracle of engineering, so when pain strikes, your body is telling you to get help fast. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois is proud to feature their spine care team. Doctors Kowalski and Smith, the professionals at Orthopedic Center, specialize in back and neck pain. So put our spine care team on the job. Find out more online at orthocenter-si.com. Stop the pain, fix the problem, and enjoy life again. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, President of Community First Bank. By now you have heard about our new One Checking product. The new One account is a high interest earning, free checking account designed for everyone. Unlike other banks that pay interest on higher balance, this account pays interest on all balances. From high schoolers to Warren Buffett, One will work for you. You can talk to one of us at 244-3000 and learn about the details. One, exclusively at Community First Bank. You will be one happy customer, member FDIC. And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com. It's powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what healthcare should be. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski alongside. Glad to be with you for South Southern Conference Preview Weekend. Of course, now we welcome the head coach of the 9-0 and Centray Orphans from last year. It's Ray Calling. Ray, good morning. Good morning, guys. How are you? Pretty good. It's finally football time, and of course, we're six days away from the start of high school football season. Centray, obviously. Are we? Yeah. Are that close? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hard to believe, isn't it? Oh, we need more practice time. <laughs> well, and what has se- certainly seemingly been a, a tumultuous off season, of course, in Centralia with with the Evers Field situation. You guys get to start on the road with the Salem Wildcats and the annual Shrine Bowl, and I have to imagine that with everything that has gone on, it's going to feel pretty good to finally get the season underway. Oh yeah, obviously. Yeah, every every year at this time, you're you're getting to that point where you need a goal, and you know you've been through a week and a half of. Uh, practice, you know, most years you can say double sessions, but this year we can have the long practices, and uh, it's it's nice to have that that carrot sitting in front of you, you know, now knowing that, you know, less than a week you you got to play. Less than a week last year, last two years, two playoff berths for the orphans going to the four A playoffs. This year, a different team, a different setup. A lot of talent has graduated. Is this next group coming through, really wanting to prove their merit as far as what has graduated last year, last couple years at Centralia? 
Yeah, you know, they, they, they know they accept the challenge. They, they, they want to they want to keep this thing moving in the right direction. And you know, I, I think we all understand that you know Rashad Campbell's not around anymore, and Diamond Psychic's not around anymore. And you know, but at the same time, it's a, it's a, it's a great opportunity for a number of our kids to to, to get some. Get some pub uh, pub time, and you know, get some actual snaps on the field, and and, and do things on their own. Looking at the South Seven Conference, it was one of those things. The last couple of years, your team has been dominating. In fact, conference champs. Looking to the South Seven Conference, you've been at Modern Day and in the conference. How balanced in your mind is the South Seven as far as heading into this season with the number of teams that could come out on top? Oh, uh, uh, probably the most balanced it's been since I've been here. Honestly, I, I feel like. Uh, any night, anybody can beat anybody. And I, I just, I, I know I said it last year, and I, I really meant it last year. And I don't, I don't know that our conference champion is going to make it through with the, without losing. And I just, I kind of believe that same thing this year. And uh, I think because anybody can beat anybody at any time, this is, it, it could be a great test every week. Great test every week, and a great test to your non-conference schedule as well. Of course, you open up. Uh, with Salem, of course, in the Marion County game that goes on. And then, of course, Bethalto Week 2 at Effingham 3, Mascuda Week 9. It's a nice little test for your team as far as your schedule that has changed since you've arrived at Centralia. Yeah, it, it, there, there's there's nine tests there. I mean, we know that there's no game that, you know, obviously there's never a game you can take take for granted or take lightly. But, you know, we obviously know there's, there's nine good tests there. And I tell you, as a coach, that makes it a lot of fun because, you know, you have to work hard and, and, you know, once you work hard all week, you can see what happens on Friday. Looking at Friday, looking at next Friday, you'll go to Salem, a 7.30 start, the traditional start. How many kids return for you on both sides of the football this year? Well, offensively, I think we only have three guys who played a number of snaps that are back and uh, you know, that started or, you know, we're right there in the starting lineup three to four and thought the same on defense three to four. Well, and taking a look at some of these returning kids who have been with you and been with the program, and obviously it's kind of the elephant in the room. The Evers Field situation has taken place over the summer, not getting into too many specifics. Has that been a big distraction to your team, or have they been able to stay focused over the summer practices? No. You know, honestly, we haven't had one discussion about anything that's gone on with that because it's not in our hands. The only thing we can control is, is – you know, snapping that foot, that helmet on, and putting them shoulder pads on, and getting out here and getting better. I, I drove by the Evers Field the other night. Sprinklers were on, whatever else. That place looks like a golf course. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed and impressed with the amount of work you guys have done. I mean, it looks great from driving by and looking at the field here before we start the season. I tell you, I think our surface is second to none, other than maybe turf. But I, you know, even, you know, now with the, with that surface, I don't. I, if if it's like it is right now, I'd take that over turf. Well, no doubt about it. I, I was able to see it earlier this week and how plush it was, the, the beauty of the greenness to it. But in this entire situation, of course, having a beautiful uh, surface there to play on, how nice is it to have the administration backing that you have, knowing that they support you 100%? That has to be something uh, very comfortable. Absolutely. It's the only reason I came. You know, to know one, it's not the only reason, but it's one of the only <laughs> reasons why I came is because I knew the administration was going to be in our, in our you know, in our corner the whole time and, and with us and, and you know, doing whatever they could to make sure that we, we got what, what we had to have to run a football program. Well, a football program has certainly come together under your tutelage. Brings us to our final question, the WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week. What was your least favorite subject in school? My least favorite subject? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that's probably an easy one. Anytime we got into a higher-level math, I thought she was going to say any meeting with Chuck Lane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, I, I, I kind of like sitting and talking to the boss. But, but, yeah, any kind of higher level math. You got me into that algebra 2 or trig or pre-calculus or that stuff, man. It was, ooh, that was tough for me. Uh, wow. Yeah. Oh, always a great time. Ray, of course, I know we'll see you at some point in week eight, I believe it is. But, of course, we'll get to talk. I'm sure I'll get to talk to you sometime before then. I believe your coach's show set to uh, kick off on Monday with, with Leo. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll be on uh, Monday night. I'm not sure the exact time, but uh, I'm sure we got plenty of time to keep to uh, iron that out before we get there. Nice. Always looking forward to it. Ray Collins and Trey Orphans. Good luck this year. Good luck against Salem. Hey, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, and uh, have fun and good luck this year. As my old buddies always say, if you ever ask, if you ever talk to those radio guys on the radio again, tell them when they're when they're broadcasting the game to save the score more often. Always. 
Always. <laughs> we agree. Yeah. <laughs> Ray, always a uh, privilege. Uh, yeah, same. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one. Thanks. That's Ray Klein, of course, head coach of the Centre Orphans. And uh, that's always something funny that we talk about is, is saying the score more often. There's actually a very, 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 very good story, a funny story about saying the score more in the CHT hospitality room, mm-hmm. um, of which that was part of the reference. Well, the question of the week is off the charts right now. We already have eight different responses. I haven't refreshed just yet. Yeah. Well, besides I, I still have the two from, from the original, so that's four. So, yeah, if I hit well, refresh, I'm sure I'll see mm-hmm. those. We got a whole bunch of people hitting in. We want you to chime in as well. What is your, What was your least favorite subject in school? We have a little bit of time, of course, before we go to our to Johnny Hollis of Cesar Lear Waltonville Woodlawn. Of course, unable to catch up with him. Black Diamond Week, I believe, uh, had some other duties going on, but we'll talk to him this week. Get caught up on all things Red Devils football. Um, least favorite subject in school? It's not that it was my least favorite. It's just because I, I struggled with it. Would probably have to have been physics. I, f- I fully understand it now. I did not understand. Well, actually, no, I love the class. Bob Tomlin was amazing. Kayak Carl, Dastardly Dan, amongst others. But um, So least favorite, probably not. It's probably a bad answer for least favorite. I struggled with that the most. I really liked most of my classes. I don't know. You probably have your answer already thought up, though. Math. Higher level math. I'll go geometry. Okay. Because I liked physics. It was just tough for me at the time. Bob Tom was amazing. I never understood why math letters and numbers need to go together other than to figure out how much you have or have not in your checking account. I mean, other than that, really, what do you need letters for to figure out linear equations, whatever else? It's when you brought the shapes into it and then tried to bring move numbers with shapes in a very confusing manner. Because yep. it goes against everything you're taught to try to learn these shapes and numbers in the first place when you're going up through preschool and kindergarten. So it's like basically a tr- it's a reversal of everything you've known for like the first 15 years of your life. Right. So It's just uh, kind of a why. I'm very, and I'm very fortunate. Like algebra and math through grade school, I had amazing teaching. I had an amazing freshman algebra instructor. Um, oh, yes. yes. Yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, so that yep. actually really helped me because I was struggling with algebra uh, at that time too, but... Um, even Algebra 2 and Trig wasn't so bad. It's just geometry was a pain. So, yeah, that's definitely my, my least favorite subject. But there we go. You can answer us on Facebook, facebook.com slash WMIX Sports, on the Twitterverse as well, at WMIX Sports. And there you have it. That's our WMIX social media question of the week. Please chime in. We'd love to hear from you. Last week it was, what was your favorite subject? That's actually still there on Facebook if you want to go back and find part of that two-part question. Quick reminder, 9 o'clock at Ford Square and St. Mary's Grade School, they will have the... Driven to Give fundraising event. Of course, it's it's a similar to the drive one for your school that we've talked about time and time again. It gets underway at 9 o'clock. Wraps up about 3. All Lincoln vehicles will be able to be driven. Of course, you can go to St. Mary's or you can go to Ford Square at the uh, back entrance. But up to six grand can be raised just by test driving any Lincoln vehicle. That's 300 vehicles times 20 bucks a piece. It's not a bad deal. It's pretty good. Of course, uh, coaches, teachers, volunteers will all be there on hand to, to take you around town. And then 100 other people... If they want to go for a second drive in a Lincoln MKX, up to two more thousand dollars. So up to eight grand can be raised for St. Mary's School today at Ford Square and at St. Mary's School. It's a driven to give test drive event. So there you go. Go support that. Go support St. Mary's. Of course, the drive one for your school for Mount Vernon High School, I'm sure, will be coming up before you know it. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, more talk here on the Saturday Sports Show. South Southern Conference preview weekend here. Football gets underway Friday night. This is the Saturday Sports Show from WMIX Sports. The health of your kidneys has a big impact on your overall health, affecting everything from your blood pressure to your bones. And if you ever have a kidney problem, Dr. Kangura is here to help. Dr. Kangura trained at the Mayo Clinic and specializes in conditions ranging from kidney stones and uncontrolled high blood pressure to chronic kidney disease. Dr. Kangura sees patients at Crossroads Specialty Clinic. For an appointment, call 618-241-9071. You can. 
King City Chrysler Special Tent Event is running for a very limited time right now. That's right, the tents are up and the prices are going down at King City Chrysler. Try 0% financing on several models and rebates never heard of before. Their selection of cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs is the best around. Hurry into their tent event running for a limited time to find the vehicle you're looking for at a price you can afford. Come see the associates at King City Chrysler Center, 1603 Broadway in Mount Vernon, and be sure to browse their inventory online at King citychrysler.com and don't forget about chrysler's express lane fast oil changes and more next time you need fast service no appointment necessary just drive up and express lane advisors will get your vehicle right in it's all in one convenient location at 1603 broadway in mount vernon Welcome back, Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. This is where we had hoped to talk to Carbondale head coach Nick Hill. Of course, picture day, we told you it's organized chaos. Um, he unable to be with us today. We'll try to catch up with him again. Had him on whenever he first took the job, or was officially named the head coach of Carbondale, of course. He takes over for Dan Custer, who on a Carbondale team last year in 2012, they just missed the playoffs barely. They finished 4-5. and five. Uh, made the playoffs, I believe, a couple of times under Dan Custer, but that's a team where you look at the Terriers and some of their success or and or lack thereof over the past couple of seasons. It's a Carbondale team that has struggled at times, and Mount Vernon, the Rams, of course, played them very close last year. I was distracted. <clears throat> that was a close game because you and I saw you and I saw Carbondale week two. And they absolutely decimated Heron at Carbondale. We thought, wow, 50, 60 points. This team's going to be loaded. They kind of spiraled down out of that. Mount Vernon gave them fits on the road last year at Blyer Field. This year, according to reports last night from the Carbondale Soap game, that Carbondale looks phenomenal offensively, that they're going to be able to rack up some points and do some different things. Now, of course, soap games are soap games because – you know, what can you take from a soap game or dign or glorified practices is what I call them, where you're trying to make everybody look halfway decent. You're running plays and everybody knows what you're running. Your defense can't really hit or can hit. And, you know, what can you say? It, it'll be interesting to see how Nick Hill comes in. He was hired late July. Probably had very little time to put in a lot of new things, a lot of new stuff offensively, wondering, you know, finding assistance. He's got his staff. It'll be interesting to see how he does coming out of the gate there at Carbondale. Well, and that's the thing, and we've all known time and time again, that's an awkward position to have to step into. And then you, you look at the fact that he had to come in midway through the summer. You had very, the, Maybe it's turmoil, maybe it's not down there, but you do return some skill positions. I believe quarterback is Hoffman, um, was last year. You, you do lose some talent as well. But typically with Carbondale, there's things that you can always count on. You can usually count on a above, an above-average quarterback, yep. um, some decent skill, and then usually a either an exchange student or just a really built beefy kid that is a really good linebacker or lineman is usually what you can always count on. Those are usually the three givens with Carbondale Terrier football. I can tell you their kicker last night did struggle with some kicks. That's not atypical. Well, and and that's you know they did you know point extra points and field goals and things that like they're going to have that power to do that. But for Carbondale, you know they're starting with five of their first seven. On the road, and that's brutal. They got to go to Murfreesboro for the Jackson County game in Week One, which is a almost a hundred years of tradition. And I think, in fact, the stats I have on that, the, those teams are about as even as it gets as far as records. They go to Heron Week Two. Of course, Heron's laying in the weeds, waiting on them for their beatdown last year. And in Week Three, they host Waterloo, who was in the playoffs last year. Week Four, they got to make that long trip to Centre on the Cheese, and then they get Cokie at home Week Five. So they start out, and then they got to go to Mount Vernon Althoff. So, I mean, you got five of your first seven on the road with a new head coach and your last two home games against perennial playoff teams, Marion and Harrisburg. That is a brutal, brutal schedule for Carbondale. In fact, Nick Hill has got to get a lot of things going for a team to be on the road that long. And, and the good thing is he does have a senior quarterback and some veteran players that are returning for his team. Well, and always the work cut out for you. How many times have we seen a Carbondale team maybe start 4-0? And then, oh, roll, yeah. and then roll one and four the rest of the way or oh and five the rest of the way and, and not get into the playoffs. And, you know, this year it's going to be interesting. Heron's supposed to be very, 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 very good. 
that'll be a good matchup in week two. Uh, you have a Waterloo team that usually is, at worst, middle of the road. Mm-hmm. So that that should be a pretty good game. Curious to see how the Centralia game pans out, as you mentioned, on the road. Centralia going to be very young. We just heard from Ray Calling. Yep. Akahokia is a wild card. Depends on who now, they have out. 62 kids came out for football on the first day. I'm sure they'll get more at their lower levels. According to the article I read, we'll get Norm Sanderson of BND to talk more about that. But uh, Koki is a mystery team. I think they had some kids obviously transfer out when they didn't know what sports were going to be around. So they had six or seven football players, I read in that article, uh, out, uh, transfer out of the program. So, I mean, what, what will Cahokia bring? And then you look at Carbondale, they come to Mount Vernon in week six. We'll be interested to see Nick Hill and his staff. Then they go to Altoff week seven. Of course, you know everybody knows how tough Altoff is for 2A school, tongue-in-cheek. And then Marion Harrisburg. It's a tough, tough schedule for Carbondale. I mean, of course, that's the way it should be. They're a 5A school. But like you said, they started the year last year 4-1, 4-something, and four and something, they went and didn't get in. That's and, uh, usually a typical Carbondale right. season. Out of the gates quick. You know, you're beating up on the likes of the River to River and Murphy and Heron. You get a Waterloo team who hasn't been good until last year. And then Centralia, who hadn't been good the last two years, they usually get off that quick start, and then they got to face the buzzsaw the rest of the way and then struggle. And I know the point of reference here in Mount Vernon lately has always been 2005, but that's a perfect example of a Carbondale team that came in, I think, 4-1, and one, pretty mm-hmm. cocky, and it, got, it was throttled, I think, 54-7 by the time it was all said right. and done. And, and, I mean, that's just that's typical. I don't think that's what's going to happen this year. I think that Nick Hill will do a very good job of keeping things in check. Uh, having been there, quote unquote, been there before, right. and so well, very, very interesting hire. I, I like the fact that he's down there. They start out three and zero last year. Beat Murphy a couple touchdowns. Beat Heron by forty. The game we saw. Then they beat Waterloo thirty four seventeen. Waterloo was in the playoffs last year. Got beat in the first round. Alt Marquette. So we got to see Waterloo. Oh, that's right. And then, then they lose at home against Centralia in a great game. Then they lose at Cahokia, get shut out. So they're kind of wobbling at that point. They get home, and we did the game, of course, Mount Vernon, held them off by seven. Then they lost to Althoff, got shut out. And then they go to Marion, got shelled, 42-13. Then they go to Harrisburg, got shelled, 40-19. Of course, you ended up with second place in 2A. Marion made the playoffs, and then Harrisburg went to the core semi. So, you know, that's a very typical Carbondale thing. They'll start out hot, manage to get it 5-4, and 6-3, and then, and then, or not get in at this case last year, four and five. No doubt about that, of course. Plenty more to talk about here on the Saturday Sports. We're going to leave the South 7 for just a little bit. Talk about a team in our backyard, the Cesar Valera Waltonville Woodlawn Red Devils with Johnny Hollis after a break here on the Saturday Sports Show. Powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital, it's what health care should be. Back after these. I'm Jason Moore with a look at your next rad weather. Plenty of sunshine and warm as we start the weekend today. We could see patchy fog early on, high of 88, clear skies tonight, low of 60, sunny, hot, and humid for tomorrow, high of 90, low of 66 for your Sunday night. Remaining hot and humid as sunshine gives way to a few clouds on Monday, high of 91, sunny skies, humid on Tuesday, high 92. Next rad weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois. It's back. RLC Golf Outlet Super Demo Day on Saturday, August 31st. Major manufacturers will answer any questions about your favorite equipment, plus free balls and fittings. You can test the best golf equipment in the industry and enjoy free hot dogs and soft drinks. Plus, RLC has outrageous sales all day on the most popular names in clubs, balls, bags, and swag at Super Demo Day, Saturday, August 31st, from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. at the Red Lake College Golf Outlet off of Potomac Boulevard in Mount Vernon. Cherry Creek Driving Range is now open every day. A digestive problem can affect every area of your life, but now there's a specialist right here in town who focuses on digestive health. Mayo Clinic trained Dr. Teg Paul Atwal has opened the only gastroenterology clinic in Mount Vernon. Dr. Atwal treats acid reflux, gallbladder problems, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcers, and more. For your appointment with Dr. Atwal at Crossroads Specialty Clinic, call 618-241-9071. Welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com, all powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. I'm Chris Hugo. He's Danny Zerwinski. Glad to be with you here this morning until 10 o'clock. We're skipping out of the South 7 for just a little bit. Catching up with Johnny Hollis. He is the head coach of Red Devil Football at Cesar Valier, Waltonville, Woodlawn. Coach, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. 
You know, a very great morning. Six days away from the official start of the season to me, at least that first kickoff at 7 o'clock for many. You guys have the El Dorado Eagles coming in on Friday night. Of course, meet the team last night. Hard to believe we are finally to that point where kickoff is just six days away. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, the summer just snapped by, and all of a sudden, like you said, we're in week one. So uh, uh, it's it's crazy. And, and, and really, the way this year started, the preseason, I think you talk with any coach, it's been a different preseason, just with some rule changes, but also uh, school and football starting at the same time. It's been kind of a struggle at times. And your struggle, I, I won't say it's a struggle or it's compounded, but you're in a little different setup. You're not dealing with one school. You're dealing with three schools in the co-op setup with Woodlawn and Waltonville and the new rules and this. I mean, what things did you guys do as a staff to maybe prevent or and or be ready for this transition of the rules and the dealing with the three schools? Yeah, uh, we, we never know exactly, you know, when our co-op schools are going to start. I mean, we have a pretty good idea. But this year, we just decided, you know, instead of having any morning practices at all, we were just going to start in the afternoon. And we knew that that would be a possibility that things might be hot. But uh, we didn't really have a choice this year. We just had to have practice at 3.30, and we have every day since we started, except for this morning we've got guys in. So um, it's just one of those things. It's it's part of the job. You know, it's part of who we are as a team. And, and you know, we've learned to deal with it. And, uh it's, it's well worth it, you know, we, as I was looking at my roster a while ago. I mean, half of our squad is from our co-op schools. So uh, we're going to have about 60 on the team this year, and 30 of those are coming from those schools. So it's well worth it. Uh, we put some good players on the field because of those things. So uh, we appreciate them. And, you know, those boys' commitment, us coaches were talking about that last night. The guys that come from Woodlawn, especially Woodlawn guys, I mean, they got, you know, they got an hour extra practice time if you count their bus travel. So um, we, we appreciate their commitment to the program. Speaking of commitment to the pro, and I sound like Al Davis when I said that commitment yeah, to you the did. program. Wow! Oh my gosh! Okay, uh, I got to stop that being a Cowboys fan. But anyway, I look at the last four years: four playoff berths in Class Three A. A ton of talent has walked across the stage to get their diplomas, whether it's Cesar Valera, Woodlawn, or Waltonville. Talk about the kids returning this year for your team on both sides of the football. Yeah, uh, well, we. I mean, we lost a lot. You know, we lost a senior quarterback, a senior halfback, lost our starting tight end and DN and Justin Kulik. That's a big loss for us. Matt Laux was a middle linebacker and a guard. Uh, we lost our starting center, a um, couple other linebackers. So we lost a lot, but we also had a lot of kids that have been putting in a lot of time in the weight room and uh, just getting mentally prepared to take their spots. And so we've got kids that are coming back. We've got uh, eight starters coming back. Uh, so overall, I think we're going to be fine. We got uh, Damon Hart coming back, and Brandon Cockrum, and Caleb Miller is only going to be a junior. He started as a sophomore at fullback. Uh, Nick Nasalik is one of our better linemen. Bryson Sanders, um, he's one of those kids we wouldn't have without the co-op. He's going to just going to be a great player for us. He'll be a junior. He's going to play O and D line. Um, I could mention a lot of other ones. Um, but these are guys that are coming back that have started at least on one side of the ball. So we've got a good a good nucleus and a good foundation to build off of. And then we've got some newer guys coming in. I'm excited about the prospects of Ross Owens. As you guys know, he's a good basketball player. But, man, guys, I'm telling you, he's going to be an excellent receiver. Uh, he's just going to be a sophomore, but he's going to start for us. Um, Tyler Baxter is an explosive player that we got coming along. He's a senior. Um, but, man... He can go. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of exciting uh, guys that are coming along and going to fill these spots, and I think they're going to do just fine. Speaking of filling spots, the Black Diamond Conference, of course, it's kind of like a rotation system every year. Chester, Carmi, SVWW, Johnson City. If everybody sticks their nose up and takes a shot and in the last few years wins that conference title. Is there anybody you're willing to put that bullseye on and say, yeah, this is the team or teams you got to watch this year in the 2013 to BDC? Well, I mean, I think, you know, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't speak for the rest of the coaches, but, I mean, right now, you know, you have to give it to Chester right now until somebody proves them different. Uh, you know, the, the season they had last year, and then they're returning a lot of guys, uh, special specialty guys, skilled guys, uh, some guys up front. So, you know, they're returning a lot of talent. I'd, I'd, 
put them at number one. And then I'll tell you who I think is going to kind of come up and surprise a lot of people is uh, Carmine. I, they got the Sailor kid back. He's going to be a senior. And then they've got a lot of good linemen, I think. And they've been working hard, getting stronger over the off season. So, you know, and then, of course, you know, we opened with El Dorado. And we know they were a great team last year. Hit the uh, injury bug at the end of the year, and we just happened to get by them there at the end of the season. But uh, we know they're going to be coming after us on Friday night, and I know they're loaded. I think they return like 18 starters or something like that. So um, it'll definitely be a dogfight. I look at your schedule, younger team. How important will it be to have four of your first six games at home to get your team kind of grounded as the season goes on? Uh, it'll, it'll be it'll be big for us, you know. Um, It'll help those kids get off to a good start, you know, and that's something that we've not always done well, I mean, even with seasons or in games, and that's something we're trying to correct is trying to get off to a good start. It's hard to make up ground in a game of football or in a season when you get behind. We were lucky to do that last year, and we were able to run off five in a row towards the end of the season at the varsity level. But, uh, yeah, I mean, your schedule is always huge. And, I mean, at the varsity level this year, our schedule – you know, we start with uh, El Dorado, Johnson City, Chester. That's pretty tough <laughs> right off the bat. So, And then our last three games are on the road. And so it's a it's a tough schedule for us this year. And I, I know some other teams are in the same boat. But uh, we'll just play them one at a time. You know, those slow starts, you know what you do is you blame any first-year varsity boys basketball coaches in your building. That's what you do first. <laughs> you put it on him, and then that way everybody, you know, kind of defers that. We say that in jest, obviously. That's a great idea. Yeah, why don't you remind him of that? To do that? Yeah. Hey, our final question, you know what we're going to do, because we're going to have you on weekly. You get us caught up today because we've got a, wall, a lot of Waltonville with non listeners that want to keep up with the Red Devils. We're going to have you on weekly. So you'll get used to this like you did last year. Our social media question of the week this week is, what was your least favorite subject in school? Oh, that's a no-brainer, man, math. Oh, so you're, right, you're a right-thinking kind of guy. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I'm... If I, if I can if I can add stuff up enough to uh, pay bills and stuff like that, I'm good. <laughs> I got calculators and cell phones, and I don't really need my pencil and scientific calculator. So <laughs> you don't need that draw out linear equation. You know what? But we, you and I we have to be quiet because what your principal, you know those oh, math know. those math teachers hey, get kind of sensitive. Hey, that's 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 for smart guys like Coach Garner. He's the math teacher in fifth grade. So, so what you're telling us is you don't use a graph on a daily basis. Hey, that's not my game, guys. I'm telling you, <laughs> Coach House. I can do it. I can do it if I have to, but I'd, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you on that, Coach. A uh, big game to start with the El Dorado Eagles. Good luck to the Red Devils. Look forward to talking to you again next week. Hey, appreciate it, guys. Thanks for the coverage. <laughs> That's Johnny Hollis, head coach of the Cesar Valer Waltonville Woodlawn Red Devils, and we still have a bit of time before uh, we talk to Kerry Martin and dip back into the South 7, of course, to talk about the Marion Wildcats and their new field. But you look at the Red Devils from a year ago, and sure, they lose some to graduation. Um, a name that you know stuck out, obviously, from hearing it, obviously, Tyler Baxter returns, and Ross Owens is a wide receiver starting as a sophomore. And that was just kind of Ross, and, and not to single a kid out, but that does not surprise me that he is starting at wide receiver as a sophomore. Has that mentality, has that athleticism to, to do that. And you take a look at Tyler Baxter, who returns with some experience. And it should be a very interesting year in Franklin County for the co-op. I, I look at, more importantly, the fact that this particular program has lost a ton basically in the last four years. Mm-hmm. I mean, names synonymous with Cesar Blair Waltonville Woodlawn football, you – you go back to 2010 when they first got in the playoffs and lost to Nashville at home in that close mud fest. Uh, you know, guys, Gibson, uh, you look at see, Gibson, Brock Wheatley. You look at, you know, Dane Eubanks, uh, Miles Tinsley. That whole crew went through. And then, and then the following year, you know, you have Trey Widges coming through and then Justin Kulik, and that group played a couple of years. And, and now that whole – scheme of players is gone now and now you're getting younger guys like Ross Owens I think I'm amazed in the fact in two things you had the new practice regime this year he is one of the few people in the area that I know of dealing with three schools trying to coordinate because schools all these schools start near or not at the same time and then the fact that you know you got to deal with bus riding and I'm a, I'm, I'm amazed 
that 60 kids in the football program, that half of them come from the other side of the co-op. I mean, over half. You know, he said about 30. And I, that's an amazing number to me that tells you that if Cesar Valer did not have this co-op, I know there were several people against it a decade ago, if they didn't have this co-op, there wouldn't be any football at any level down there. You'd probably have varsity, and you'd probably have to drop some fr- drop the freshman program. And thank goodness for them, Walton Mill Woodlawn still do this every two years to up that contract because football be a tough get. That reminds me of, of a time when I was running around Cesar right about the time that the co-op came to a vote. And I remember the inordinate amount of people upset that it might take chances away from their kids and trying to explain, even then when I wasn't as big in the high school sports as I am now, that there may not be a chance for any positions to be taken if right. this co-op doesn't doesn't happen. And so, you know, it's good to see that football is alive and well, and it's good to see them get into the postseason year after year when they lose so much on an annual basis. Uh, and that's that's the thing. I mean, the talent that's going through and the talent they're getting and, you know, three schools that are very, very competitive on the basketball courts join together for four, three or four months, and it's amazing how they get together and go. And, again, guy, an example, guys from Waltonville Woodlawn wouldn't have the opportunity to play in a sport such as this if not for the co-op. And that's what the co-op is about, to let kids from other schools play in things that they may or may not have an opportunity to play in. Well, and it's certainly not an unenviable task, as you were talking about, trying to coordinate with three schools. And, uh, you know, obviously John Shadowins did a great job with that. Johnny Hollis now doing a great job with that. So expecting big things out of Red Devil football. We'll talk with Johnny Hollis week in and week out here on the Saturday Sports Show. Our WMIX Sports Correspondents will return next week as well as... We now know where they, our correspondents are going, whether or not we want to yes, release that now. But nah. I didn't think so, but no. I'm they're, glad they're, I know. They're scheduled for a couple of weeks. Yeah. I mean, our correspondents are hard workers. They've already got their games picked for the first two weeks. It's a big deal. And they're going to diff- have- all four different games. It's amazing. I'm surprised they didn't end up at the same place, but they're going different games. We have our schedule planned out for a while as well. Of course, the Mount for the Rams will travel to Rochester on Friday night, 6.30 your pregame, 7 o'clock your kickoff. It's the Rams and Rockets here on AM 940 online with video at WMIXSports.com. And, of course, we can't wait for that to kick off on Friday night. Also can't wait until 9 o'clock. It's just a minute away. Of course, it's driven to give sales event, not a sales event, fundraising event, my apologies, at Ford Square and St. Mary's Grade School. Up to $6,000 via test drives can be raised for St. Mary's today. That's $20 per vehicle, 300 vehicles. Let's make it happen. It's a Lincoln program today, driving all Lincoln vehicles. And, of course, don't forget there's more. Up to 100 more test opportunities to test drive a Lincoln MKX, which would allow for an additional $2,000 to be raised for St. Mary's. So up to $8,000. And, of course, you'll drive with a volunteer or teacher or maybe even a coach. Who knows? Stop by St. Mary's in Ford Square. It's now until 3 o'clock today. Driven to give. Up to eight grand. let us make it happen. Of course, we need to take a break on the Saturday Sports Show here in just a moment. We'll come back with... Kerry Martin of the Marion Wildcats. Before we talk to Coach Martin, of course, we all know the history of the state title at Carterville, the stops in various places and making each one successful, changing the culture. But a few changes to Marion this year in the sense that they have a refurbished playing surface. They have a nice new turf. Nice new facility. A lot of renovations going on in the athletics and also in the school. Who Was it you and I or it could have been Leo and I talking about the bleachers that they put in behind one of the end zones? I like that touch. You can stick your band there. You can stick the student body there. Right. I mean, that's a nice, nice addition. Worth noting. Well, it is. It's good, good times. Good building up. Yeah. That's what you got to do. Amen. Certainly, uh, something to note if somebody might be in a similar position. Anyhow, we need to take a break on the Saturday Sports Show. We'll come back with Kerry Martin, talk Marion Wildcat football here in our South Seven Conference preview here on the Saturday Sports Show, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. Back after these. Have you been by Second Chance Auto lately? The selection is amazing. Their lot is full of great-looking, dependable cars, trucks, SUVs, and vans. Family-owned for the past 33 years, Second Chance Auto is the cure for summer new car fever. No one has a better selection of nice vehicles priced under $10,000. Almost all their vehicles come with a generous 3-month, 3,000-mile warranty. There are no dock fees, no shipping fees, no processing fees, and absolutely no gimmicks. Just honest deals at low prices. Second Chance Auto, Route 142 East in Mount Vernon. Call 244-4582. Second Chance Auto. If you can't pick us up where you live, move. move. This is WMIX Mount Vernon Marion, another Withers Broadcasting Station. Convenience and prop service is what the Medicine Shop Pharmacy is all about. 
Pharmacy owner Eric Black wants you to know that his pharmacy's drive through staff will have your prescription ready in 10 or 15 minutes. There are two drive through windows and a staff member is always ready to serve you with a smile. Another great service is our delivery. We'll bring your medication to your home or office just to make your life a little easier. Here's pharmacist and pharmacy owner Eric Black. What differentiates us is the level of service, the level of convenience. We have two drive through windows, delivery here in town to business or home. And those kinds of things you just cannot get. And when you couple that with the connection, uh, the personal connection that we feel with our customers and they feel with us, really is a, uh, we really have no contest with the chains. Make the Medicine Shop Pharmacy your pharmacy of choice. They're locally owned and support the community too. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy, 2339 Broadway in Mount Vernon, or call 618-242-8776. Welcome back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com. It's powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski in studio for you. Glad to have you with us as we roll into our number two, South 7 Conference Preview Weekend. Proud to welcome one of the more successful programs in the South 7, head coach is Kerry Martin. Coach, good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Doing pretty good. Six days away from the start of high school football, as I've been saying with most of our guests this morning. Official start to me is, is kickoff. And, of course, finally the, the, all the pads get to come on. Finally kickoff. Finally all the fans in the stands. Finally under the lights. And has to be the greatest time of year. Yeah, it's exciting. And this football has a special way about it being the, um, you know, kind of starting the school year and big starting date. And everyone's excited to get the uh, season started and so uh you know we're, we're excited to be a part of it again and look forward to a great year looking at a great year your team made the playoffs again last year coming into this season and how many how many players return on both sides of the football for you we got about five on both sides of the ball uh we got a few guys that played you know some other you know some part-time roles for us but uh, certainly we've got some big holes to fill and we feel like we've got some kids that have stepped up but we still got some uh, question marks like everybody else Speaking of question marks, one of those is your facility. Obviously, something new this year, turf and a lot of renovations going on. To all our listeners about what's been going on down there at the Marion football facility as well as the athletic facilities there at the high school. Well, we're under a four-year building project plan, and we've uh, built a new uh, we have a new surface on our field, and it's an uh, astroturf surface, and it's an amazing surface to play on and practice on. It really is. It, it may be the best artificial surface I've ever been on. Uh, we're real proud of it. It uh, plays well, feels well, it's fast. Uh, we also have a new scoreboard, uh, which is beautiful, which was donated. Um, we have a new facility being built in our west end, our east end zone, excuse me, and uh, it'll be done in a year from now. So, and a new school project that's coming uh, in the next over the next three years, building a new school, new parking lot, new auditorium. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of innovations. We've added some. Uh, Bleachers to our stands this year, 400 new seats. We'll add another 600 next year. So there's a lot of excitement going on, a lot of changes taking place. And, uh, you know, it's, we're pretty proud of our program here, and uh, I just think this adds to it. I think the kids are excited, and uh, it's nice to see. Change is something that's gone on in the South 7 a lot in recent years. Your team's been on top since Trey and Mount Vernon. seems like everybody's had their run at the top this year. When you look at the South 7, is this as balanced as it has been since you've been the South 7? Yeah, I, I felt like the last couple of years we've had, it was anybody's. I mean, uh, you know, there have been a lot of close games, a lot of pivotal games, a lot of late wins by teams. I mean, we've had some teams run the South 7 table, but we, but in the process of doing so, there's very few blowouts in this, in this uh, conference. We usually come upon you know, an overtime game or one, two-point games, last-minute heroics. I mean, even even the teams that are winning the conference are scratching and clawing to get it done. So it's um, it's a battle. I think this year will be no different. I think it's anybody's to win. I think there's uh, there's reason to believe. I think there's reason for everyone to be optimistic. Speaking of being optimistic, one of the things I look at in your schedule is four out of your first five games on the road, you do end up with three out of four at home. But how tough is that for a schedule to set up with three of your first four on the road, the likes of having to go to Granite City, Harrisburg, Cahokia, and Mount Vernon? Well, you know, I mean, of course, we try not to make that excuse. We just tell them it is what it is, and you've got to, you've got to, you know, become a good road team. I mean, it's 
you can't change it, so there's no reason to, to make it an excuse for the kids. We just got to deal with it. Uh, we do know the end of the schedule has like, got a lot of home games, as you said, and, and in the process, we just got to learn to play well on the road. And we've been blessed over the years to be a pretty good road team, so um, we just don't make it an excuse. We just got to get it done. And, uh, you know, we have a great fan base that travels, and we feel like, as far as home crowd and stuff goes, there's nothing like playing at home, but I think our crowd travels really well, and we feel, we feel kind of at home no matter where we go. And uh, that's a real tribute to our fans. Uh, and speaking of a tribute to your fans and tribute to getting it done, scheduling is becoming tougher and tougher for the likes of Marion Carbondale, Mount Vernon, kind of being in an, in an island uh, of 5A amongst the teams in Southern Illinois. And, and it's seen Mattoon on the schedule, seeing St. Louis Normandy to close out the year. How tough has it become not only to get games, but to keep those games on the schedule? I just think there's a lot of unknown. You know, we go into a season and, and we just, you know, you have a you have a team for two years, you know, we picked up uh, Mattoon for a couple of years, and, and that's all that lasted after two years. We're, you know, we're, it's, they got to move on. Uh, they got a con- you know, kind of a, uh, a crossover with another conference. We lost them. We thought that was a really good pickup for us. Uh, it's just Normandy's only a two-year contract, and it's going to end after this year. So, you know, it's, it's just the unknown. It's looking at your play this week or that week, and I think the, the challenge for a coach is developing those rivalries and, and knowing a team and, and uh, you know, developing that, that uh, getting the kids fired up to play somebody you've got a little history with. And, and uh, that's kind of been lost a bit. Uh, we don't play a lot of local teams anymore outside the, you know, outside the, the conference games. And we have to travel, and so does Mount Vernon and, and Coke and everybody else in the conference. And it's just kind of, I guess, the way it's going to be from now on, I think. Uh, and that's okay. You know, there's not a lot of bigger schools around here. We need to play bigger schools. But uh, I guess the unknown is the only thing I don't like about it. Well, one thing that's not unknown these days is the WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week. And we want to know, what was your least favorite subject in school? Ma- uh, math was my least favorite subject. Um, never, you know, and, and again, that's, that's probably my fault more than more than any teacher I had, but... Uh, not a great math guy. I loved history and went on to become a history teacher. I like science, but um, math was not my thing. Well, as long as you can add up all those wins you've achieved over your career, I think I think we're doing okay. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, obviously we wish the Wildcats the best of luck. Always great to be able to talk to you here on our program, and we look forward to doing it again soon. Uh, it's great talking to you guys. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Kerry Martin, head coach of the Marion Wildcats. And, of course, you look at Wildcat football and um, – Something I don't necessarily like to bring up with him anymore is the term changing the culture that, that has kind of become the, the norm there in Marion just because I feel like it becomes overblown. But that's exactly what he did when he came in there. In, what has it been, nine, ten years now? Oh, it's been more than that. <clears throat> it's, it's, been, it's hard uh, to believe 10, it's 12 been that, now. It's I mean, hard to believe that it's been that long. But just the turnaround there, I mean, and the fact that in the South Southern Conference anymore, they're, you know, with Ray up in Centralia and, and, every, and Jared here and, and – of course, Galladay and Cahokia and Turner over there at Altsoff and now Nick Hill and Carbondale. Uh, there's no there's no gimme in the South Seven Conference. There's none. I mean, this is it, this is as tough as it's been the last two or three years. I mean, everybody's had their run to top. Basically, everybody's won a conference title except maybe Carbondale. And this conference is as balanced because Centrea graduated a lot. They're young. Mount Vernon's young. Carbondale's an unknown. Altoff got the 2A title game. It's an unknown. I mean, there, there's just so many factors that I think you'll see some phenomenally close games and some good scores and some great games as far as the South 7 Conference is this year. Well, and it should be a great year in the South 7, no doubt about that. Should be a great year in the Black Diamond. We'll slip back into the Black Diamond here for just a moment, talk with Mark Beitler about Fox's football down there in McLeansboro. Todd Thomas and Pinckneyville still to come as we catch up with some of the coaches that were unable to join us over the past couple of weeks in our area. And then still some scribes to come here on the Saturday Sports. We'll talk with Mike McManus, of course, one of the voices of the Orphans on X95 and the Big 1210, our sister station of Centralia, sports editor of the Morning Sentinel as well. We'll talk with Norm Sanders of the Belleville News Democrat uh, talking about pertinent info. Of course, here on the Saturday Sports Show here on WMIX. Glad to have you with us. We hope you'll stay tuned. Don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter at WMIX Sports. We're on Facebook as well, where you'll find our WMIX Sports social media question of the week. Of course, we want to know, what was your least favorite subject in school? We told you ours. Now we want to know yours. And a lot of interesting answers, of course, come in today on our Facebook page. It's a popular, popular question. 
Well, everybody, everybody can answer that one. That's one for everybody in that case. Well, what I like, I like we're getting a lot of math. Because math, really, when you think about it, can be a very difficult subject depending upon the level of it and, and the person's interest in that particular subject. But I always say you're going to use this someday. And some of these principles that I was promised I would use someday, I've not used. Okay, it's hard to graph a linear equation out of your checkbook or going to the Walmart or whatever. I mean, it, you don't have the opportunity to use calculus every day. I don't. You don't have the opportunity to use trig every day. But again, everybody tries yeah. to get you to believe that back in the day. And in radio engineering, to a degree, there's there's some math and some advanced math involved. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, basically contemporary math, had, beyond that, I don't know how much use I have for it on a daily basis. I do some algebra just to make things interesting, but I certainly don't have to. Physics, I mean, obviously plays a part in what we do here. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as you can add, you're pretty well good to go. Exactly. And subtract. I guess that's important, well, too. Well, I mean, it's it's just a matter of choice. Yeah. Laws of averages. I mean, not. we've had, some, we've had uh, as I look here, a lot of the responses have been math, algebra, geometry specifically. But, uh, you know, we've seen science. We've had Ooh. a couple English. Oof. We've had a P.E., a science, but mainly most of the most of the answers have been in the math world. Let's put it that way. PE didn't really bother me that badly. I know a lot of people don't like PE, but I didn't like the track unit having to run the mile and all that. That was not fun. Mm -hmm. But I kind of dogged it my freshman year. Sophomore year, I found out that if you improved on your freshman year stuff, you got extra credit. So I had like above a hundred percent my sophomore year because I actually mm -hmm. tried. So that. I got presidential fitness scholarship <laughs> Ooh, fitness thing they do in grade school. That was always now. fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. That, that was not good times, mm -hmm. as I'm sure Marty Pulley can attest to that. But um, yeah, not not good times in grade school, but good times here on the Saturday Sports. We'll talk Fox football after the break. Brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. Back after these. This is Chase Landers with Landers Collision Centers. It's been said that in order to grow, you have to change. Very rarely anymore do insurance companies ask the phrase to go out and get three estimates. The new phrase insurance companies are asking is, would you like to take your vehicle to one of our direct repair facilities? This is a way for your insurance company and collision repair center to help relieve the stress you may have from your unfortunate incident. And as Landers Collision Centers has adapted to this forever changing industry, we are extremely happy to announce that we are a direct repair facility for over 10 different insurance companies. It's likely that one of them is yours. From dealing with your insurance company, setting you up at the rental vehicle, lifetime warranty on repairs, and of course, Landers free lifetime detailing for qualified customers, Landers Collision Centers literally takes the stress from your incident and turns it back into a shiny new ride for you to enjoy again. Landers is here for you whenever you need us. Big or small, Landers fixes them all. One triple eight landers That's 1-888-LANDERS. State Farm, this is Jessica. Hey, Jessica, Jerry Newman. Does State Farm offer more discounts to more drivers? Yep, like the good driver discount. So it's for good but not great drivers. No, Jerry. There's also the multi-line discount. For calling from multiple lines while driving. You should never use a phone while driving. I only make calls from my car when I'm stuck in a ditch or something. Are you in a ditch? Yes, I am. State Farm offers more discounts to more drivers than any other insurance company. Get to a better state. One more reason to call State Farm agent Tony Wilton Mount Vernon at 242-1421. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Glad to have you with us as we roll into hour number two, well into hour number two now. Brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski in studio for you until 10 o'clock. And, of course, we're talking primarily the South 7 Conference today, plus some of our other area institutions that will be taking the gridiron on Friday night. We're proud to welcome McLeansboro Foxes head coach Mark Beitler. Coach, good morning. Good morning. How are you? You know, doing pretty good. As I've been telling everybody, we're just six days away from the opening kickoff of this high school football season in 2013, and there's probably no more exciting time than once you're able to get out there underneath the lights, fans in the stands, cheering, yelling, and having the kids kick off and finally get the year underway. Yes, it's very exciting. Our our kids are, are uh, you know, they're like you said, they're excited, they're ready to go, 
and uh, we're looking forward to Friday night. Looking forward to Friday night, looking forward to this year. Four of your first game, five games are at home. That's got to be big for a, a team coming back from last year. Yes, you know, I, obviously when you're playing at home, it's, it's always a little easier. You don't have to worry about travel time and, and all that stuff. So uh, we, we, we love playing at home, and I, I think it'll be a good year for us. One year in the Black Diamond Conference you've had, this is year number two for you. Have you gotten kind of the layout of the land and how things are going in this conference yet? Yeah, yeah, I did. I had some time over the off season to study some more film and get a little more familiar with uh, with our opponents. You know, when you only have a week to get ready, you know, during the season, sometimes that it, it takes some time to get used to things. Looking at your team this year in 2013, as you mentioned, four of your first five at home, a tough opener against Chester and Fairfield to start with. Talk about some of the kids that are returning for you on both sides of the football. Uh, you know, we, we have quite a few returning. Uh, Tyler Potter's returning. Um, uh, you know, Madison Wilkerson's returning. Bailey Gay's returning. Travis Stevens is coming back. And that's just to name a few. I mean, we, we do have a lot of guys coming back this year. Looking at this South Seven Con- or I should say Black Diamond Conference, the Foxes this year coming in, is there a team or teams that you've got your eye on as kind of a favorite this year? You know, I'm. I don't know. I don't know about a favorite this year. I kind of got my eye on all of them. I think it's going to be very competitive. Looking at this year, this was a change in high school football in Illinois with the practice situation, different rules, different things for acclimation process. Uh, was that different for you in your second year and trying to get ex, you know time with your kids? Was that a, a bit major problem for you and your staff to deal with this year? Uh, it, it's definitely a change. I don't think it's a major problem. Uh, obviously, I'd like to have more time. I'd love it if we started a little earlier in August instead of when we did. But, you know, the the rules are the rules, and everybody's got to follow them. So, but it, it was a little bit of an adjustment, but I don't think it was a problem. Uh, and and uh, the adjustment is this. Now with the warmer weather the last couple of days, is have you noticed any kind of difference out of your team as far as practicing uh, with or without pads and far as the heat ends up getting hotter and hotter? Uh, you know, I thought it was going to be as it got hotter because it wasn't very, it wasn't that hot in July. A lot of times when we were having camp, but I think our guys have done a great job of of getting themselves in condition. So I haven't noticed it as much. Every once in a while, we'll see it. We got to, you know, we'll we got to remind them and we got to get it going. We can't, we can't die down a little bit because it's getting hot. Well, and, and especially with the changes that the IHSA did institute with the, with the heat policy, and and now not having really had much heat over the summer, getting into that heat, of course, a heat wave expected over the start of the season. Will that change anything as far as your practices and preparations go with this forecasted heat? Well, you know, we're, we're going to be smart with the heat, and you know, maybe, and and we'll adjust our practice schedule accordingly. Uh, they probably more really bit more based on when we condition. You know, maybe we change how much we condition or when we condition. But I always tell the kids, if they're playing hard during practice, they they're conditioning themselves. So, you know, and if if they're not, then we have to do it at the end. But I, I always tell them just play hard, and you'll get water breaks. And so we're pretty safe with it, and we really pay attention to it. But at the same time, we still got to get ready to play. How, how, do you know? Do you guys do a soap game, Gatorade game, such this weekend? Yes, we did one. Uh, we did one last night, and uh, we had a, a, a youth clinic before our uh, before our soap game, and had the players working with the kids in the community on different drills, and it went very well. And so did our scrimmage last night. I was pretty pleased with, with what we did. Do you get a sense of, I don't know, I guess it would be pride or accomplishment when you see your football guys? It's amazing to see kids work with other younger kids. Do you get a sense of pride to see how your kids work with the younger players in the community? You know, last night I was very proud of our team. I think the kids that came out and really had a good time, and, you know, our players had a good time working with them too. So, yeah, there was a little bit of pride there that just that, you know, they handled themselves very well and very respectably, and I think they, they promoted our program in a positive manner. 06 was the last time the Foxes were in the playoffs. Has that been a goal this year as far as your team talking, hey, uh, we'd like to be that team to break that streak? Absolutely. We've talked about that often, but I saw it. I said, you know, it, it just doesn't happen. You just walk out on the field and it happens. We have to make it happen. Well, making it happen indeed, and, and glad to have had you with us today. Before we let you go, 
our famous WMIX Sports Social Media, the qu- social media question of the week this week. What was your least favorite subject in school? My least favorite subject in school it had to be math. Nice. It had to be math. Any what particular kind of math? That's what we've kind of been narrowing down. Oh, probably algebra two. There you nice. Go. Man after my own heart. I like that. Algebra two was kind of a kind of a tricky one, especially when they rolled in trig with it at times. But Coach Beitler, Foxes this year will open up the season, of course, on Friday night, just like everybody else. And I believe Chester on the schedule at home, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Big game for the yeah, Foxes. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you. That's Mark Beitler of the Hamilton County Foxes, better known to us as McLeansboro. And, of course, trying to improve upon last year's Mark certainly should be able to do that. And, of course, under his tutelage and his expertise, certainly hoping for some more success this year. Danny mentioned, of course, they have not made the postseason since 2006. They went up to Red Hill and uh, found out just how good the Salukis were in, in 06 in Week 10. And it was a wet field and not very many dry spots, not very many good spots on that particular game. But Fox is looking to get back in the playoff hunt here in 2013. We're looking to continue our football preview today. When we come back after a break, it'll be Todd Thomas of the Pinckneyville Panthers. It's all after the break here on the Saturday Sports Show, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. I'm Jason Moore with a look at your next rad weather. Plenty of sunshine and warm as we start the weekend today. We could see patchy fog early on, high of 88, clear skies tonight, low of 60, sunny, hot, and humid for tomorrow. High of 90, low of 66 for your Sunday night. Remaining hot and humid as sunshine gives way to a few clouds on Monday, high of 91. Sunny skies, humid on Tuesday, high 92. Next rad weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois. This is Chase Landers with Landers Collision Centers. It's been said that in order to grow, you have to change. Very rarely anymore do insurance companies ask the phrase to go out and get three estimates. The new phrase insurance companies are asking is, would you like to take your vehicle to one of our direct repair facilities? This is a way for your insurance company and collision repair center to help relieve the stress you may have from your unfortunate incident. And as Landers Collision Centers has adapted to this forever changing industry, we are extremely happy to announce that we are a direct repair facility for over 10 different insurance companies. It's likely that one of them is yours. From dealing with your insurance company, setting you up at the rental vehicle, lifetime warranty on repairs, and of course, Landers free lifetime detailing for qualified customers, Landers Collision Centers literally takes the stress from your incident and turns it back into a shiny new ride for you to enjoy again. Landers is here for you whenever you need us. Big or small, Landers fixes them all. When triple eight Landers, that's one eight 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 Landers. The health of your kidneys has a big impact on your overall health, affecting everything from your blood pressure to your bones. And if you ever have a kidney problem, Dr. Kangura is here to help. Dr. Kangura trained at the Mayo Clinic and specializes in conditions ranging from kidney stones and uncontrolled high blood pressure to chronic kidney disease. Dr. Kangura sees patients at Crossroads Specialty Clinic. For an appointment, call 618-241-9071. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, AM 940 and WMIXSports.com. Glad to have you with us. Bottom of the 9 o'clock hour, Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski alongside. We appear courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. There we go. We leave the Black Diamond, go back to the river to river Mississippi, where we talk Pinckneyville Panthers football. They will open up their season Friday night against Red, but I believe that, according to the IHSA website, to be a 730 start. On Friday night at home. Of course, we welcome to the new head coach of the Panthers, Todd Thomas. Coach, good morning. Good morning, guys. Actually, let me go ahead and say the, guy, the schedule's wrong. The game will start at 7 o'clock. <laughs> there, there well, we I, I, that's why we set it up for you, Coach. You can come out hammering <laughs> there right there. Good way to get it started. That's right. You're going to start off with a good note for us and a good note for you. It, I can't believe it seemed like just yesterday you and I were talking at Benton football games when you worked for Coach Roper. And out behind the stands there at Tabor Field. Now you're the head coach of the Pinkneyville Panthers. Any difference moving over a spot from an assistant coaching position to a head coach spot? You know, Danny, that just seems like yesterday. It, it's just amazing how time flies and you can't take anything for granted. And, you know, you got to live every day to its fullest. It just, again, it seems like yesterday that I was there. And uh, I think it's a great place to play games and watch games. And we got to go there this year and we're excited about that. So, But as far as, you know, a head assistant, this will be my 20th year. 
and I've kind of done it all, you know, in regards to offense or defense or, you know, I've coached under many good coaches. So it's been a pretty easy transition for me. You can't be that old. Coaching 20, what are you about, 22 now, 25? Coaching 43, yeah. Okay, I was going to say, you can't be that old. Uh, I, I, that's why I say time flies when you and I were back there admitting talking before and after games. This year, you come in as a head coach underneath these new football coaching rules. You've been around long enough, like you said, three-a-day practices, two-a-days, hitting on pads on Saturday. All these rule changes this year with the acclimation policy, how has that gone as a veteran coach to deal with that new rule? It has been a little bit challenging and a little bit frustrating. Um, I can remember in 08 when Coach Berry took over at Johnson City, we ended up going uh, from 7 in the morning uh, till 2 in the afternoon. We had three practices broken up between there, so you can get a lot done. Uh, it's been a lot of work planning and preparing practices to try to just streamline everything you need to get done. So it's been a little challenging. I mean, you know, it is what it is. You, you, you've got to follow the rules, and it's a little bit frustrating, but everybody's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a level playing field. Everybody's got to do the same thing. And everybody's doing the same thing as you are. You'll open up next Friday night against Red. But talk about your team, the Pinkneyville Panthers, who returns from last year's team. We have five returning starters on offense and five returning on defense. We've got a couple other kids that got experience on, on both sides of the ball. So I would consider ourselves an experienced ball club, and that means a lot. Um, I would say our style of play, we're going to try to be very balanced. Uh, we've got Colton Nelson, who's our returning starting quarterback, played in four games last year, and those four games threw for 750 yards until he got injured. So it's, it's no... You know, it's no secret that that uh, you know that he can throw the ball. We're going to try to move the ball in the air a little bit, but at the same time, uh, we've really worked on the run game, trying to be balanced. You know, to where we can have people balance up and not just tee off on us and bring everybody. So, uh, again, we've got Justin rushing back, kind of a running back receiver, and Chase Lazenby has a little experience at running back. And on defense, we've got a couple secondary guys back, Dalton Baffin, and uh, rushing will play a little bit back there. We're going to try to keep him more on the offensive side of the ball this year. And Colin Hagney, who's our uh, who's our captain, will be a starting inside linebacker. Looking at you, river to river, the Mississippi side, obviously you also play West Frankfurt and Benton from the Ohio side. <clears throat> you look at this side of Mississippi, is there a team or teams that stand out for you as, as the favorites, maybe including your own Pinckneyville Panthers? Well, uh, you know, I, I don't think there's any doubt in anybody's mind. Carterville is, is the favorite this year. They're extremely talented. Uh, Coach Trust, you know, he is a tremendous coach. They have a great program, great tradition. So, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're expecting big things, and I think everybody realizes this conference. They're probably the front runner. But, you know, this is a balanced league. You know, from top to bottom, Coach Beavis is getting Sparta going. You know, they're always athletic. From top to bottom, it, week in, week out, there are no easy weeks, you know. And when you cross over and play the other side, that just makes it even tougher. So, you know, again, we would like to be in a position where we compete at, where we could compete at the top top of our league. You know, great two A three A conference. If you can compete at the top of our conference, you can probably compete statewide at two A three A level. A two A team, Pinkneyville was the last time in the playoffs. Does that kind of figure differently in how you get your team ready and or if make the playoffs? Kind of scout ahead as far as the season when it gets rolling along. Well, not really. You know, our, our goal is to make the playoffs this year. That's one of our seniors' goals. And, you know, you're going to have to go 6-3 and three to be a shoe-in to get in. So it doesn't matter 2A, 3A. They're comparable. You know, you, put, you talk about teams like Casey Westfield. You talk about teams like Royal Forsyth. You know, they're as good as any 3A team around here. So it, it's really not, you know, it's really not a big deal. We just kind of look at it as it's kind of the same division. Well, of course, Coach, we're, we're glad to have had you on today. And you'll become accustomed to our WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week, which this week is, what was your least favorite subject in school? Least favorite subject in school? <laughs> well, I was never really very good in science. There were a couple other subjects I wasn't very good in either, but science I probably struggled with most. Is there a particular science that you didn't care for or just all of them? Uh, just any of them I wasn't very good at. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Coach? Best of luck against Red Bud Week 1. We look forward to talking to you again soon here on the Saturday Sports Show. Appreciate your time. God bless. As Todd Thomas, of course, assistant coach a long time under Jeff Roper at Benton. 
And then, of course, now all the way fast forward to taking the helm at Pinckneyville to lead the Panthers. Again, they get started 7 o'clock. Don't, don't believe everything you read on the IHSA.org website. They have a 7 o'clock start time with the Red Bud Musketeers at home in Pinckneyville to open up the year. Of course, we have plenty more football to talk. We'll talk some more area schools with Mike McManus of the Morning Sentinel, as well as sister stations WRXX, WIOY in Centralia after the break. It's all coming up. Brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. Here's Jeff Schmidt for Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon. We've got the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado in, and it is a remarkable truck. We're very, very excited about it. A completely new truck with an option of a six and a half foot bed on the crew cab, which is a feature that a lot of our customers really like. The ride and the handling of this truck is just second to none. It's the most fuel efficient V8 on the market. Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon, 3423 Broadway in Mount Vernon. What does technology sound like? Is it the clang of heavy machinery, the beeps and chirps of an electronic gadget? At the New Good Samaritan Regional Health Center, technology sounds a little something like this. It's the sound of a young girl excited because her mom's being released the same day as her minimally invasive surgery. Thanks to the Da Vinci Surgical Robot, our surgeon's hand motions are seamlessly translated into smaller, more precise movements. But surgery isn't the only way Good Samaritan is raising the bar for advanced health care in Southern Illinois. That's the sound of a patient's health record being updated and stored electronically for immediate access by nurses, primary care doctors, and specialists alike. That's why soon, the new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center will use all electronic patient health records. Less paper translates to faster, better care for you. And that sounds a little something like this. The new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center, raising a hospital, raising the bar. Southern Illinois now has a better home for sports. It's the all-new WMIXSports.com. Jam-packed with local scores, video highlights, and archives of every local sports broadcast on WMIX. Did your team win? Missed that game-winning shot last night? Didn't catch your favorite coach on the Saturday sports show? WMIXSports.com is right at your fingertips. On your computer, your smartphone, your tablet, or your video game console. It's the all-new WMIXSports.com. Another free service from Withers Broadcast. <laughs> we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Glad to have you with us. Bottom of the 9 o'clock hour here on WMIX Mount Vernon. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski in studio. Brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Our next guest, Voice of Central Orphans on WRXX, WIOY, as well as the sports editor of the Morning Sentinel, Mike McManus. Leo, good morning. Good morning, Jim. You know, it's a great morning. Finally getting to talk high school football, and it's right around the corner, six days away. And, of course, uh, aside from everything that you've been dealing with uh, up in Centralia with the Everett's Field situation, I know you've been keeping close tabs on, on a bunch of area teams as well. Yeah, you know, it's... It, it, it stinks being on vacation when big stories hit, you know, but uh, that's kind of, we've uh, certainly had our eye on, on the uh, field situation here and and uh, where things are at now, uh, just to update everybody. Uh, there will be a hearing on Monday at the Marion County Courthouse. Uh, essentially, um, the, the two sides, the sides that filed the petition, the side that contested, will have their say in front of the county election board and then uh, a, a trio of folks, uh, elected officials, will delve into those petitions over the next few days, and at some point, I would think, maybe within the next ten days, have a decision on on uh, whether uh, the school can go ahead and, and refinance and, and get something going, or we'll wait till March and let the voters decide. Uh, that's well. I won't. I won't comment on that. I had had a nice little thought on that, but. It... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I get you, around. I, I got to, you know, the only real teams I've had a chance to talk to, I mean, <laughs> of course, I've spent a lot of time with Ray Calling here in Centralia uh, over the last week or so since they opened up practice. And, and I've had a chance to uh, talk to Brian Short over Breeze Central. I'll tell you, uh, as far as our area teams go, Central has a collection of skilled kids. Uh, they're all returning from last year from a high-powered offense with the exception of their quarterback. They lost Austin Rickoff, who was one of the areas that I thought best kept secrets. I really thought uh, this kid was a tremendous quarterback. He's over at Lindenwood Bell Bell, uh, going to play there this year. But, uh, they'll have a, 
you know, they, they have some terrific kids. Uh, you're familiar with Jacob Timmerman, the real good basketball player, uh, who plays, has been a four-year starter for them or will be a four-year starter for Central in basketball. He is a very dynamic football player as well from that wide out position. So they can be an interesting team to watch. We always know modern day, uh, wh- whether it's been Dennis Whitick and Ray Colling and now Jim Stiebel, always going to be one of the better teams in the area. They're, I think they're fighting a little bit of a numbers issue right now. They're used to having 65, 70 kids out. I don't think they have uh, as many this year as they've had in the past. So uh, not really sure. I know they graduated a ton. So. Not really sure what to expect out of modern day. Carlisle, a collection of really good skilled kids, uh, very good skilled kids. Uh, w- what they can do up front will determine their fate in a team that I think is maybe a year away from being very good. Uh, but this year, I really think they can get themselves back into a, a spot that can put them back in the playoffs would be Nashville. Uh, I-, I think that Coach, Coach Kuhn over there has, has got some kids. They've got a quarterback now who can throw it a little bit. They've had some kids come out for the first time. And uh, their big tight end, who's also you know one of their big guys on the basketball floor, Royce Newman, uh, we'll see what he can do. He's one of the starters of freshmen, and the sky is certainly the limit for him. Going back to modern day, a very successful independent school, how difficult is it year to year for them to schedule games in football? Well, I know this year they're playing Jacksonville. I bet they probably didn't want to do that. Uh, but they're playing Jacksonville late in the regular season. They, I think they're good, Dan, uh, schedule-wise next year, with the exception of Week 2. Uh, I know they have already filled that for 2015 and 16, but for 14, that has been an issue. They, and it's a shame the Nashville Modern Day Series is over uh, after this year. This is it for them in week two, and I, I always thought that was a, a, a great rivalry-type game. Unfortunately, you know, as we always say when we're talking with Cubs fans, it's not a rivalry if we keep beating them. You know, if we, but, and Modern Day has enjoyed most recently. I think they've won the last ten times they've met on the football field. So, Nashville looking for a little something different there in week two, and I know there have been talks that uh, – Centralia is also open next year for week two. So common sense would tell you where that could end up, uh, and I hope it's the case. I think it would be a great game, obviously, with the ties that bind. Uh, Ray Colling, of course, eight years at Modern Day as a head coach, four as an assistant, four as a player, uh, now here in the fifth season at Centralia. For one year, I think it would be terrific uh, to get those two together. And play, and, and I know that Ray has extended the invitation, and we're just hoping they accept. There are a lot of schools I think are going to have open dates next year and the year after. Fourteen and fifteen are going to have to fill games, but um, Salem Centralia opening game next Friday night, the Battle of Marion County and the Shrine Bowl and everything else. Uh, Centralia has kind of dominated the last couple of years. The talent they've had. Is there anything on the horizon for Salem that could give them some hope? Absolutely. Uh, I really look forward. Next Friday night to call in a very close ball game. Uh, this is a, this is a different time uh, now for Centralia. <laughs> they have certainly gone from the team that everybody loved to play to a team uh, that not many people really want to play. Uh, you know, this, people were calling and emailing five years ago trying to get Centralia on the schedule as fast as they could do it, but that's kind of stopped. And when you go eight and one and nine and zero oh in the last two seasons, that'll happen. And there is still a lot of excitement with this program, even though some terrific players uh, graduated. You know, the Centralia loses four, you know, off their offensive line. They lose a record, their career all-time quarterback, their all-time leading rusher, uh, a couple of very good wide receivers. Defensively, they're bringing back a little bit, but, you know, still some key losses there. Luke Shores, their leading tackler, has graduated. Salem is still young, uh, but they do have... Uh, they have some kids that are capable, and they're getting the Conklin kid out on the football field for the uh, first time in his high school career as a junior. And I've heard nothing but good things as far as what he's been able to do, playing a little full, fullback and also playing safety. Uh, and they return quite a bit. I think this is a game because Centralia is going to be so young. I, and I mean young, taking the field Friday night. This is a game Salem experienced certainly on their side. 
Centralia will counter with the athleticism and the speed, and we'll see where it goes. I know in that first week, I always think experience means more than it does in week seven or eight. I, Centralia is going to be sending a lot of young ones out there uh, for their first varsity action on Friday night. When you look at all the teams in the coverage area who the, your, at your paper you cover as well as uh, Southern Illinois, is there a team or teams that stand out that can make a deep run? I know Harrisburg went to the semis last year in 4A, but Southern Illinois, Southern Illinois football teams have struggled lately. Is there a team or team out there that you go, yeah, this team's got a chance to make a deep run in the playoffs? I do, Danny, I, there is. and I'll, I'll tell you, and I have not been listening to your show, and if someone else has said this team, I'm not piggybacking. I think Carterville has a chance to have an amazing football season. Uh, when you look at what they return, they only had four seniors on a team that made the quarters last year, lost to Greenville in the quarters, and this is a team that was on their fourth-string quarterback. At that time, they were leading that game by 10, and their third-string quarterback went down. Now, a lot of counties can't find four, high, four quarterbacks, let alone one school of, of 550 kids. I really think Carterville has a chance to do something very special this year. They, it, it would seem to me they have all the ingredients you would need uh, to, to be playing. Are, are we at DeKalb or are we at Champaign? Where are we this year? DeKalb, I believe. We're DeKalb. Well, that's a long drive, but I think they wouldn't mind making that. I really think Carterville is the is the class of Southern Illinois, and of course you can't judge by class, but as far as an elite team that can go very deep, I think it's got to be Carterville. Well, Carterville certainly does look to have the pieces they need to make that run again. Leo, obviously, our, our, our favorite time of each interview is our WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week. This week we want to know, what was your least favorite subject in school? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> I am a... I am a math guy, love doing numbers, crunching numbers. I don't know why people thought triangles, rhombuses, and squares needed to be involved. Throw geometry away. Amen. Yeah. Oh, that was the most miserable semester of my life. <laughs> I was having to deal with high school geometry my sophomore year. I guess for the whole, I deal with it the whole year. Never caught on. Made straight A's in math my whole life. At every level, with the exception of sophomore geometry, that is, it, never wanted to see it again. Same story for me. I mean, it's like when they when they brought the shapes into it, it's as if they they are taking everything you had learned the prior fifteen years of your life and telling you it's all wrong. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll give you a second one. Art. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I've got a I've got a fifth grade birdhouse project that's still not done, and I'm forty four years old. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to get to it at some point. I hated art. I was one of the only kids that I, in my class growing up that despised art class. I'd, I'd rather go shoot baskets or do something else. Can't draw, can't paint. Every, I still do stick figures for people. I am not capable of drawing anything. So, Me neither. Um, for those who can, God bless them, but <laughs> man, alive. It, it, but geometry first, then we'll go with art second. Solid stuff always, Leo. We look forward to I'll see you at some point probably before the football season starts, maybe on Monday. So uh, look forward to catching up with you then. Absolutely, guys. Tis the season. Can't be a better time of the year. Amen to that. Mike McManus, yeah. of course, is one of the voices of the Orphans on Sister Stations X95 of the Big 1210 up in Centralia, as well as the sports editor of the Morning Sentinel. We'll take a break. Come back. Norm Sanders of the Belleville News Democrat will join us here on the Saturday Sports Show, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, President of Community First Bank. As many of you know, one, our new product was launched on 7513. We named the product to reflect our core values of serving one community, one county, with one product, and serving you one at a time. Community First Bank's one product delivers value by combining the highest yield in the market with access to your funds anytime and anywhere through internet banking, mobile banking, debit cards, and yes, even by writing checks. Call us at 244-3000 for details. One, exclusively at Community First Bank. You will be one happy customer. Member FDIC. You can count on us. Yes, you can. Luxury has been reinvented with the latest innovations from the 2013 Lincoln MKX and MKZ. The king of luxury crossovers is back at Ford Square in Mount Vernon with many innovations, including heated and cooled front seats, panoramic vista roof, and available ambient lighting. You'll love everything the MKX has to offer. 
and don't forget the redesigned 2013 Lincoln MKZ. With elegant fluid lines, every surface is faceted with many dimensions of discovery. Inside you'll find genuine wood appliances with global open power windows and premium leather trimmed interior. For a very limited time, enjoy $4,000 in dealer discount plus 0% financing for up to 60 months on the MKX and MKZ. See their selection of Lincoln Luxury at Ford Square, 1501 Broadway in Mount Vernon or online at FordSquare.com. A digestive problem can affect every area of your life. But now there's a specialist right here in town who focuses on digestive health. Mayo Clinic trained Dr. Teg Paul Atwal has opened the only gastroenterology clinic in Mount Vernon. Dr. Atwal treats acid reflux, gallbladder problems, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcers, and more. For your appointment with Dr. Atwal at Crossroads Specialty Clinic, call 618-241-9071. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show on WYX and WYXSports.com. Powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski in studio for our final segment. Of course, we welcome to the program from the Belleville News Democrat, Norm Sanders. Norm, good morning. Morning, guys. Glad to have you back with us. Of course, it seems like I've somehow been gone every time we've been able to get you on, whether it's to talk hockey or high school sports. But high school football season is upon us, thank goodness for that. And things in the Metro East certainly look to be shaping up nicely for football. Yeah, it's, it's a great time of the year. And it's like after that summer off, even the, the sports writers are ready to, to get back and, and cover the, the weekly stuff again. It's, uh, I know I've been doing it for 28 years, and I, I honestly look forward to that, that first Friday every time, maybe because I used to play football. But it's just something about it that's, kind of different than the other sports. I think it's kind of cool. Starting in the South 7, we'll start with Altoff, a team that had a great run. They dropped down the two-way. They had a disappointing title game loss, I believe, to Mercer County back in November at Champaign. How have they recovered, and how are they trying to put that behind them, especially when they thought they'd probably win the 2A state title? Yeah, that was, a, that was a game that you know they definitely needed to win. It was 14-7, to 7, a bunch of turnovers, some crazy calls, things like that, but they won't get a chance like that again, and this year they'll be back in 4A if they get in the playoffs. They're having to replace uh, the, basically their entire offensive and defensive lines. they got a couple guys back that did start, but all their best linemen are, are gone. Um, and fortunately, they have all their skilled players back, which is a good thing, including uh, you know, the quarterback is about 700, 800 yards away from the school record of career yardage, uh, Eric Mertens. And they've got a really talented sophomore receiver, Keenan Young, who just had a monster game as a freshman in the state championship game, over 100 yards receiving. So their skill positions, they're going to be scary, but if they can't protect the quarterback and if people are just got shots at him, then it's going to be tough. So probably the key to their season is how they progress on that offensive and defensive line. Altoff, of course, as you mentioned, had that golden opportunity, came up a game short. You go to the other side, the other team for the Metro in the South 7 Conference, Cahokia, an entirely different format. They didn't know if they were going to have sports. I read in the BND earlier in the week, 62 kids came out for football, but Antoine Galladay figures when school starts, there'll be more. How difficult of the situation has it been for Coach Galladay and Cahokia to deal with what he's had to deal with in the off season? Well, we were watching that closely because – if they had said that Cahokia wasn't going to have sports, it would have been like a massive free agency market. I mean, <laughs> there might have been kids, some of them go to Eastside, some of them go to Belleville West, some of them go to, you know, they would have all been split up one way or another. It would have been crazy. But it's, and I think that they, you know, Coach Galladay told us that they still did lose some kids just because of the uncertainty. But they, uh, I think they're going to be okay. If you look at what they did late last season, I mean, they lost 7-6 to six to Altoff at in his second mistake, they lost thirteen to nothing to Hale Franciscan. It was a seven and five team. I know it's a smaller school, but they, they started to show some signs last year. Cahokia just has better speed than anyone, and they rarely stay down for more than a, a year or two. I would expect them to, you know, push for a 
five, six wins at least. I mean, that's, that's a team that, that I keep an eye on. Uh, Hokie and Maltoff, of course, we will with Mount Vernon being in that South Southern Conference. Always very difficult. Teams that Mount Vernon also plays out of the Mississippi Valley Conference, a team, a conference that was dominated by Jerseyville last year. They went 5-0, and went 10-1, and finished the season after the second round. Well, a lot of ink for Muscoota this year. What are your thoughts on the Mississippi Valley Conference this season? I, when I look at that league, I'm thinking it's going to come down at the very top to, uh, you know, Highland and Jerseyville with Triad um, maybe pushing back. I mean, it's rare when Triad's not in the very top, and last year was a very off year for them at four and five. There was they go three years without losing three conference games, and they lost three last year. So, I, I really think. Jerseyville's got to replace a heck of a quarterback in Mr. Kimball, but they they still got a lot of guys back, and, and Highland's got two uh, 300-pound linemen, one of them going to Nebraska and the other guy going to Army, and that's kind of what they're building around. They have a transferred quarterback from modern day that probably would have been modern day starter this year, kid named Mac Waldman. So I, I think they're a team that, as they gel, they're going to get, get better, but they got that massive line, and they're just going to pound things out there, so... I, I think it's going to be a good conference. I don't know if it's, it's great up and down, but there's, they're all going to be better, good teams. Moving to the big boy conference, the Southwestern Conference, uh, East St. Louis, obviously nationally known, playing some teams. they got a big, uh, a big football shootout, is what I call it, September 7th at home with some local schools. I keep reading on Twitter about O'Fallon and all of these big-time college programs coming in to offer players at O'Fallon. <laughs> Who's going to be the favorite? Is it an O'Fallon, East St. Louis, and everybody else in the Southwestern Conference, or is somebody else that's not getting a lot of pub right now? No, you're, you're forgetting about Edwards, though, which beat East yeah. St. Louis in the playoffs last year. They were 10-2, and two, and they returned just about everybody except for the quarterback. So they've got probably – there's not a team in the conference that probably doesn't have at least one Division One player – and the uh, east side, Edwards, Zillow, Fallon, they probably got three and four, if not five. East side probably has six to eight legitimate D1 guys, including they got a guy that's a D lineman, Terry Beckner Jr. He's about 6'5", 265, and he's considered the number five defensive end in the country at his position. I mean, not just Illinois, but the entire country. Already been offered by everybody you can think of in the SEC, the Big Ten, Big 12. So if you get a chance to watch that dude, I mean, he's just – there's no block in him. He just does what he wants out there. He's very impressive. But, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Eastside's got to replace a quarterback. That, if there's one place to watch with them where they could slip a little bit, is if one of their quarterbacks don't come through, they're going to have to run the ball all the time, and they don't like to do that. So um, I really I really think it's, it's kind of a three-way race, and then you get West probably coming up in, in that fourth range. But Eastside, Edwards, Zillow, Fallon at the top. And that, that September 7th thing, Edwardsville plays St. Louis Soldan, and East St. Louis will play Lombard Montini to name a couple of games there. That's a pretty nice little shootout of football games at East St. Louis. I know there's a third, and I believe it's O'Fallon and Wilmette Loyal Academy. That's three pretty darn good football games as far as football in both Illinois and Missouri. Yeah, the, the team, uh, Montini, that East St. Louis is playing, they've won four straight state championships, and they rarely, I can't remember them ever venturing down here to play anyone, so that's a big deal. And then for them, for East St. Louis with the City of Champions Classic, they've gotten the other conference teams involved to get O'Fallon and Edwards little great games in there as well. Um, it, it, it is it is cool. I mean, that's a great facility to watch football. I know you know the East Side reputation and all that, but if you're just going to go down there to watch football, it, it's it's a great place. There's going to be just incredible talent on the field that day, and. You know, they've, they've really done a nice job with that thing, and I hope a lot of people get a chance to watch that. One more stop on the high school football circuit, the Cokia Conference. Uh, Columbia's had their run, Bruce Central, Carlisle in recent years. Uh, as far as that conference goes, are we going to see the same names or a different school pop up for the lead there? Might see a little bit different school pop up, but I still think it, it's, it's Columbia at the top, challenged by Dupo this year. Dupo's got everybody back. And they've got a new head coach in Tim Nelson, who was the coach at Marquette last year. They got to the quarterfinals in 4A. So I think that between what he could do with that talent that was already in place at Dupo, they definitely have a chance to make some noise, but they still have a lot to prove. They, they, have a, they did get to the playoffs last year. They lost to uh, Moroa Forsyth with one. They won the 2A state title. So I, I think that, you know, it's not quite the juggernaut Columbia teams of the past. They're still really good. And they're kind of they got the bar set really high for the other teams in that conference. For somebody's going to have to knock them off to get it done. Now we've talked all this football. I would be remiss 
when does the puck drop on the NHL season? How many days? Well, the Blues themselves are skating now out at the mills on their own. Um, the 11th and 12th of September, they're going to be in town and then on the ice for training camp. And then, uh, obviously, we got some training camp games. And before you know it, the season will be here. But uh, the, the single game tickets actually went on sale today, and they threw a little wrinkle in there trying to keep the Blackhawks and Red Wings and other fans out by um, not making certain games available that in, in the past where we see all those Red Wings and Blackhawks sweaters in the stands. But I don't think it'll make much difference because if those guys want to get the tickets, there's StubHub and 100 other outlets that they want. So. Is, is there more enthusiasm for Blues hockey? Seeing the Blackhawks win it twice now in recent years, is there more enthusiasm for Blues fans as far as, hey, that could be us if we keep things going the way they are right now? It, it definitely doesn't hurt because they've got – Someone right here close that they can look at as an example. And plus, uh, with Coach Quinville up there, the coach the Blues. I mean, it's like it's like if you want to win a Stanley Cup, you have to coach the Blues first and then go somewhere else. Because it's, <laughs> you know, it's Scotty Bowman, you got you got Quinville, you got Al Arbor. I mean, all these guys have won. Uh, Jack Demers is another one. I mean, all these guys won Stanley Cups after they left here. So maybe for once it'll work. And uh, with with Hitchcock, he can win one here. Is that kind of almost like a drinking game, former Blues and former Blues coaches that pop up on TV? Oh, it, it, it gets maddening. And if you if you follow the team for a long time and you look at it, it's like there's Dallas Drake lifting the cup. And this year, you know, there's Jamal Mayers. I mean, it's like there's always some Blues connection to the cup, it seems. And that probably rubs that frustration in just a little bit more when they've gone since 68 uh, without one. Speaking of frustration, our, sports, our social media question of the week this week asks you, what was your least favorite subject in school? Math, not even close. <laughs> Geometry, to be specific, but any math, I was just just wanted to move on and just hope I could do enough to get through it. Now, get into a sports writing job where you're having to do stuff with numbers all the time. So I did have to pay attention. I didn't like it, but I paid attention. Uh, Mike McMahon is also a geometry hater as well. Nice to know that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I think we just we, we tend to gravitate towards the English side of things you know, as writers. So. Certainly understandable. Norm, thank you for taking the time to join us today, talking high school football and a little blues hockey as well. We always appreciate the insight. Look forward to having you on again soon. Anytime. Thanks, guys. That's Norm Sanders, of course, of the Belleville News Democrat. Does a great job over there. Uh, regional coverage as well in terms of high school football, high school basketball. He really takes care of it all and, and does a great job. And it's sad to learn that Belleville West and Belleville Altoff didn't really have enough time to touch on that. We'll play each other after this year either. So a lot of regional and, and city rivalries are, are dying after this year, and it is unfortunate. Thank you for taking the time to join us. We feel we now have you set for high school football in 2013. We took you through the river to river. We took you through the Black Diamond. We took you through the South 7. Got some Southwestern talk in there. Cahokia, Mississippi Valley, uh, just about everybody. Even covered some independence there with some modern day talk as well and even some Apollo talk uh, with Salem. So we thank you for taking the time to join us today here on the Saturday Sports Show. Don't forget, Driven to Give fundraiser at St. Mary's School today. Also in the back showroom of Ford Square. Up to $8,000 can be raised for St. Mary's School today through Lincoln. Drive any Lincoln, up to three hundred, and up to six grand can go to St. Mary's. If you take a second test drive in an MKX, it's an opportunity to raise another two grand. Eight grand possible today for St. Mary's School. Get out there and be driven to give. It's as simple as that. Don't forget Mount Vernon Rams football kicks off Friday night on the road at Rochester. 6.30 is your pregame here on AM 940. Video online at WMIXSports.com. We hope you'll take the time to join us as the Mount Vernon Rams look to put that youth to the test against the three-time defending state champion Rochester Rockets this Friday night. It's all here on WMIX Mount Vernon, a free service from Weathers Broadcasting. Until then, after the 8 o'clock news next week, talk to you then.